on building the X set and installing the timing belt. So basically your water pump is going to be installed like so onto your block. Now um, the new pump that I ordered came with a paper gasket. However, my OEM Mazda kit, there was a metal crush gasket, which I believe is much better and also much easier to remove in the future. So um, using this style of a, of a gasket, if you have that OEM seal kit, um, switch it out to this, this gasket because I believe this is going to be a lot better, a lot better seal for you down the road. So basically put the gasket on, mount your water pump onto the block, and then thread your bolts in and torque them down. And torque down to around 17 foot-pounds of torque. Now next thing here, and this might be a little weird, uh, but I don't want to run this rear cover plate for my timing belt. So the one issue is the, um, and they're backwards, but the, um, the exhaust and intake cam gear timing hash marks are here. So what I've done is very carefully uh, taken an angle grinder and I have cut along that hash mark that is in this cover. Now what I can do is with it mounted up, I've got a carpenter's pencil, and I've shaved it very thin to slip in there, drawing on both sides. Now when I remove this plate as I have this nice pretty painted engine I want to I don't really like the look of completely covering up the cam gears I like them exposed some of you may have a problem with that and that's okay but um, now I have two hash marks that notate exactly where those marks are on this for when I go to install my cam gears now I have my cam gears put on these bolts do have some blue Loctite on them uh, just a little extra security measure and they will be torqued down to 40 foot-pounds also, while or before torquing them down, take a couple wrenches, and there are uh, hex shapes on the camshafts here, basically to allow for a wrench to go there for rotating the camshaft. But if you lock them together with vice grips, this will hold them in place while you are torquing down the cam cam gears. I have my cams timed. Basically, the E always the I on the intake cam should be pointed up, and the nub on the camshaft here should fit into the slot. Same with here on the exhaust cam. The E for exhaust cam should be up and the nub on the camshaft should be here. Now, the exhaust mark on this intake cam and the knob should coincide with this mark here. On the exhaust cam on this side, the intake mark, the hash mark here, should line up with this hash mark there. That's how you know that your camshafts are in correct timing. However, there are three slots that this pin on the camshaft can slip into. You must make sure that the camshaft is in the 12 o'clock position on both of these or, or thereabouts, and then put the, the, the cam gear on accordingly. If you just randomly select one of these three and the camshaft nubs down here, it will be completely wrong. So make sure that you have that nub pointing up on both of these when you slip the cam gear on. Now it's time to install the uh, crankshaft pulley. Now this notch in the crankcaft, crankshaft has a key that slides into it. Um, one thing that I have to adjust here is this key that slips, let me do it with my other hand here, that slips in here should align, as you can see on the cam pulley here, there's a notch. That is for top dead center of the number one piston. That should align with this hash mark on the oil pump. So I need to get this on and put my bolt, uh, pulley bolt in and then rotate my crankshaft so my number one piston is at top dead center. Now I have um, turned my crankshaft around to top dead center for piston number one. And uh, I have my key inserted and my cam gear over it. This is then uh, basically tapped with a mallet, so you should see a lot of the crankshaft sticking out here. Uh, this, this piece needs to go almost all the way to the oil pump. 
Um, it's pretty tight, tight clearance in there. Now the next step we need to do is we need to head up here and install our tensioner and idler pulley. Tensioner and idler pulley is actually um, just went on Amazon and got this uh, kit from Gates. It's pretty nice. It was about I think 45 bucks. Uh, comes with a Gates timing belt. Uh, let me see if I can find a number here for you guys. A Gates T179. I think that was the name of the, the kit too, or T179 timing belt kit. Also comes with a uh, idler pulley and a tensioner, as well as the tensioner spring. Your uh, tensioner, tensioner and your idler pulley, there are two bolts. Short one goes for the idler. Long one, because it has to go all the way through this um, hole here, is for the tensioner. So we'll go ahead and just uh, install our tensioner pulley here. And this pulley will be torqued down um, right away. The idler pulley, or the, excuse me, the idler pulley will be torqued down right away. The tensioner pulley will not because it will need to be, it will need to move um, during the timing belt installation. So just for now, I'm just going to quickly get this mounted up and ready to go. But since uh, I will need to basically keep it loose for now so I can slide it back and forth for the tension and stall the spring and so forth. Um, I don't want to torque it down. I just want to get it hand tight for now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to get the timing belt just loosely placed in, wrapped around my my crank gear here, and then I'm going to first thing notice my my camshafts are still locked together up here in the correct timing. I do not want them moving off of my set timing marks here. I want to keep them in time with each other. Basically, when I'm installing the timing belt, I'm doing what the timing belt does. It keeps the cams aligned with the crankshaft. So I'm going to put some zip ties here to actually hold this timing belt onto this exhaust gear and then I will be wrapping it over the intake gear. This here, uh, before I put the timing belt on, I forgot about, is the new tensioner spring. Uh, basically this clips on to the actual timing belt tensioner and then there's a little pin here on the uh, other side of the water pump over by the idler pulley that it wraps around there. So you need to stretch out very hard against that and that will help uh, tension up your timing belt. Uh, do that before you put the timing belt on. I was having a hard time getting the timing belt because it wasn't tensioning. That is why it wasn't tensioning. I should have actually um, put that on first before I started the process. Many ways to check your uh, tension to make sure it is correct is um, you'll see the notch here on the exhaust cam and the notch here on the intake cam. You'll see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but I have little permanent marker marks on each one of these teeth. There should be 19 teeth of uh, the belt between each of these marks. That way you know that you have your correct spacing. So you should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So that is the correct spacing and the correct tension on the belt between those two gears. The lower uh, portion of the engine again, you'll see our timing marks on our gear and on our oil pump are lined up. That means that we are at top dead center. Uh, next we thing we want to do is install this onto the pulley. This is basically the um, mount for the, uh, the uh, oh, what would you call it, the, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank here. Basically for the, the uh, dampener pulley that goes on here that also has your power steering, air conditioning, uh, uh, alternator. Uh, belts attached to it. So uh, that will mount into these screw holes, but we need to get this on here first basically so that we can install and you'll notice to the or sorry I keep bumping the camera. You'll notice to the orientation here there is a mark for the key and then this pin here will also coincide with the top dead center timing mark. Now we just need to uh, go ahead and I'm going to put a little red Loctite on this pulley bolt real quick just to um, help uh, make sure that it is solid in there. You never want this bolt coming out or getting loose or causing any problems. So I'm going to put a little red Loctite on this before inserting it in and torquing it. Next thing is uh, basically it's recommended to go through a couple rotations real quick of your engine 
just to uh, get the timing belt seated in there and make sure everything is rotating properly. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, basically get our tensioner pushed over enough to tension the belt and torque that down to 35, I think it was 35 foot pounds. So the crank pulley bolt is about 120 foot pounds of torque. Now, the way you get that, since the motor will spin freely, you need to brace it. Um, the way that I found to do it, and this is from one of uh, Car Passion Channel and Greg Peters' videos, is basically taking a couple of flywheel bolts and then wedging a pry bar or some type of piece of metal in there to keep your crankshaft from turning. So basically you have a bolt on top, bolt on the bottom, and then it's resting on the engine stand. If it is in the car, I believe it's like uh, fifth gear because I think that's the direct drive or something like that, that will uh, keep the uh, motor from, or the crankshaft from spinning while you are doing this. The reasons that I left this uh, inside timing cover off is because uh, you cannot remove the water neck with that cover on. So um, the other thing is it just it just kind of looks stupid. It's it's unnecessary. Um, so I figured I'll just leave it off. But um, putting this water neck on is kind of the last step here. The one issue is this O-ring I wanted to replace that goes in here. However, the one that I had in there was pretty damaged and I really don't like the idea of reusing it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use some RTV on this spot here filling in this uh, machine to surface for the o-ring and then uh, getting a slight lip on that as well. Uh, I think that'll be plenty to seal it up. If not, um, the nice thing about not having this rear cover plate on is at any time I want to, I can just pull a couple lower covers off and remove this. And then the next step of the process is to, in my case, I'm only using the couple lower timing covers here, but basically this cover first slides on here and then has bolt connection points here, here, and here to attach to the block. Up is to install your water pump pulley. Uh, this basically fits over the inner dish side, goes toward the motor, and this will just simply rest and bolt on like that. Next part is the crank pulley, and you'll want to insert this plate first. Then insert your crank pulley, and as you can see, there's this little nipple here, and that will point through every single piece. And the last part is putting this ring on and then bolting it up. All these pulley bolts is recommended to put some blue Loctite, as you cannot fully torque the bolt without spinning the water pump. You want to just get it as, as tight as you can with the tools and then lock tight these. So once you have it mounted, go ahead and uh, keep a couple bolts in at a time just so it doesn't spin around on you and apply some blue Loctite to the threads of the bolts. And then uh, holding the pulley, torque it down as much as you can without the water pump spinning. I think the factory torque spec something like around I can't remember what it was, 100 foot-pounds or something like that. Be sure to check your factory service manual before uh, torquing these bolts down. If your uh, pulleys are all installed, just double check that your timing notch, it's very small, but right there on your pulley is matched up with the T uh, on the timing gear. And once again, that your marks coincide up top uh, for the camshafts, and you should be good to go. That's it for this video. Next time, we are putting on the valve cover.